Hi, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a faulty indoor fan relay or indoor blower relay on a residential air conditioner. Now, like with any service call, make sure the thermostat's calling for cooling. So we're going to click the selector switch here, which will turn the selector to cool position. It will also turn down the temperature setting uh, below the room temperature. Next, we need to click OK on the procedure guide at the top, and we're going to need to do that after each step. Next, we want to take an inventory of which electrical loads are running. And if we look here, the indoor fan is not operating. Now, you'd be able to hear it running, or if you don't have speakers, these blue arrows would be spinning if the fan was running. So, no, the fan's not running. Now, we go to the outdoor unit, and we can see that both the compressor and condenser fan motor are, in fact, running. Now, if this problem is allowed to persist for quite some time, this could result in severe icing of the coil as well as the unit possibly cycling off on a low pressure switch if it has one. So we're going to say, yeah, both loads are running outside. Now we're going to remove the cover. And before we take any electrical readings, we're going to narrow our focus a bit and, and kind of come up with an inventory of possible causes of this malfunction. Now to do this, launch the wiring diagram here on the bottom left. The indoor unit wiring diagram will provide us with a way to narrow our focus here. So the indoor blower motor shown here in the top is not running. However, we know this contactor coil here at the bottom is getting power because the outdoor unit is on and this contactor is actually the relay that controls the condenser fan and the compressor. So what do we got for possible causes? Well, yeah, it could be the blower motor itself. It possibly could be a bad capacitor on the indoor blower motor. And it also could be the relay here, the indoor fan relay contacts, which are shown here, and the relay coil that controls those contacts down at the bottom right. The last possible component would be the fan switch within the thermostat. Now, even though we know the thermostat contacts are closing because they're powering the contactor coil, it's possible we have a faulty fan switch within the thermostat that's not allowing 24 volts to the indoor fan relay. So again, We've got the indoor blower motor, the run capacitor, the indoor fan relay, or the thermostat. That's it, four possible causes. Let's find out which one it is. Click OK in the procedure guide. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure for 24 volts at the fan relay. Now we're gonna do this at the coil of the fan relay. So just slide your meter out of the way. And the coil is located between blue and green here in the two glowing orange hotspots. And again, you can review the wiring diagram uh, if you want to look at the color codes. So drop the leads on the coil and see if we're getting 24 volts from the thermostat to the coil. And when we do that, yes, we are. We have 24 volts. So this verifies that the thermostat's okay. The fan switch is functioning properly and it's sending 24 volts to the relay coil. We're going to click yes on the procedure guide that we've measured 24 volts and now we're going to check for the line side voltage. In other words, we're going to verify that we have 240 volts coming into the relay at the top here. Now we could, you know, potentially have a break in these wire nuts. So we're going to check that here by dropping the meter leads on those two connection points and verify that 240 is there at the relay. And there we have it, 240 volts. So we've got power to the coil. We've got line voltage coming in. Now we need to check and see if we have load side voltage. In other words, is the relay actually pulling in and allowing 240 to the motor? Well, again, we'll check the load side voltage by dropping the meter leads on the glowing orange hotspots at the load side of the relay. And we can see here we have no voltage. Now that means these contacts are open. Now, we haven't determined whether it's the coil or the contacts, but that doesn't really matter. We've got power to the coil. The contacts should be pulling in. The relay is going to have to be replaced. But before we do that, I want to show you something. Let's click back on the wiring diagram here on the bottom left. And you'll notice that you can see the placement of your meter leads here on the wiring diagram shown at the load side of the relay. There's our black lead. There's our red lead. And again, this makes an excellent connection for a technician between the wiring diagram, which gives you a sequence of operations and helps you to find those components as well as the color codes of the wires on the actual system circuitry. So let's store the wiring diagram. Now, before replacing the relay, we probably want to take a quick look and make sure we don't just have a loose connection on the relay. So go ahead and zoom in if you need to and rotate. And we're going to pay close attention to the load side connections here. And they both appear to be secure. So we're going to say, no, there's no loose wires here. 
Now, prior to replacing the relay, you're going to need to turn the power off. You don't want to replace components on live circuitry. This could be dangerous. So click on the handle to turn the disconnect off. And then to replace the relay, simply click on it and click Replace on the menu. And you've solved the problem. But to verify that, we want to go to the upstairs or to the home after turning the disconnect back on and verify that cold air or cool air is reaching the residence. And we can see evidence by this graphic here that we do have cool air coming out of the register. So yeah, our problem is solved. Now just quickly, I want to note that our procedure guide that we followed at the top of the page can be launched here on the top left on a step-by-step -step basis. So you can go back and review any of the steps that you're not clear of. Okay, well, good luck on your future service calls. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.